From a mountaintop deep in the Gobi Desert, it is still possible to see the shoreline of an ancient sea. Millions of years ago, the Himalayans pushed up to the west, separating this inland body of water from the ocean, and now only the shoreline remains, a testament to the forces of nature. Today, the Gobi Desert is undergoing yet another transition. This one is the product of human modifications. As Mongolians look to the west and build a similar economy, there is a great need for infrastructure and resource extraction. One unintended result has been to bring several well-known native animals, such as the wild camel and Gobi bear, to the brink of extinction. Now another less studied species is declining rapidly, the Asiatic wild ass, known in Mongolia as the hulan. Scientists from around the world are alarmed, but the Mongolian herders who live in the Gobi Desert see the hulan very differently. The reason for this conflict is because the hulan eat the pasture intended for the livestock in the wintertime. The hulan is a rare animal, which is listed in the Red Book as endangered. It appears that there are many hulan here, but that is because the population is centered in this region. In 2005, Dr. Petra Kaczynski, a wildlife biologist, and Dr. Dennis Sheehy, an herbivore ecologist, teamed up to explore the world of the hulan and find out what the future holds for them. Most of the remaining hulan in the world are found in Mongolia and this area of Omnigov and Dorn, Dorngov are the primary remaining population center for the hulan. The most recent estimate that that's around that's from the fall of 2003 when there was a coordinated effort by the Mongolian Academy of Science and they came up with a population figure of about 20,000 for all of Mongolia. So the average um, recruitment is probably something around 10% and the offtake is about 20% of the population. So we are probably looking at a 10% decrease in the population at the moment. The herders do not like the hulan that much. They think the hulan kill plants and steal pasture from their livestock. This makes them feel that hulan should be killed or removed from their areas. We have to act now because we still have a good population here, so I think we really have to be careful this does not happen. In August 2005, a research expedition was ready to depart from Ulaanbaatar, the capital of Mongolia. Roughly half the population of the country lives here. This trip would be the last one that Petra and Dennis would be able to make before their research funding ran out. So they were eager to get started. The, the herder still really doesn't understand producing for a market. Oftentimes he's taken advantage of by what we call traders that come out here and purchase livestock or surplus product from the herder. You have to remember that most of the herders are still subsistence type of herders. They're producing food for themselves, for the families, and they're essentially living off their livestock to do it. Some of the government uh, international development projects, the prime focus of their activities is rehabilitating abandoned mechanical wells or putting in new wells. Now it's rehabilitating these wells, you're allowing people to come back. And um, the wells in itself do not pose a problem for the, for the Hulan, but what might happen is that you open up areas which act as retreat areas for the Hulan at the moment for people to come in. People are much more mobile now because they have um, access to Jeeps and then the, the distribution of firearms has 
probably increase there's no control and what we see throughout the, the whole distribution range is there's there's poaching going on the presence of other wild species such as the gazelle only deepens the complexity these animals have a presence in the Gobi with their own habitat and security needs for these reasons the gazelle and hulan will congregate into large herds they are highly mobile and when threatened, can reach speeds up to 50 kilometers per hour. With the recent shift to a free market economy, much has changed in Mongolia. Meat prices have climbed sharply, creating a demand for cheap meat from the Gobi region. Access to weapons and ammunition has become easy, and a recent survey showed that the number of active hunters has increased tenfold. Despite government efforts, limited law enforcement means that poaching has become the number one threat to Mongolia's wildlife. Mongolia has been working to protect rare animals as a responsible international member. We have passed several laws to protect wildlife and their habitat. Often, the national government can do little more than offer an official position. Far from the influence of law enforcement or international agreements, the attitude of the herders that live in Hulan areas and interact with the Hulan becomes particularly critical. But it hasn't been harvested. Usually the poachers take off the hindquarters. I can't see any bullet wounds. It was probably killed last winter. Just driving around, you can see numerous hulan that have been killed. They've either been shot and left plain, or they've been shot for meat, possibly by herders equally likely or even more likely by market hunters. So what we really have here is a tenuous population of Hulan, which is probably the last sustaining population of Hulan in the world. And we also have a tenuous population of herders. In many ways, their futures depend on each other. Hulan survival is largely dependent on the actions of herders to protect them, and the indefinite future of the herder will be heavily influenced by the government policies and foreign pressure being applied to protect wildlife populations. It's hard to say really what impact that's going to have on the herder because it depends on what sort of program is actually developed. Some people are saying they would like to see more, but then they would also like to utilize them. So, so it becomes a, actually a resource for them. By the end of the study, it was clear to Petra and Dennis that the future of the Hulan is still in question. 